Chris Kubiak as yeah. uh, Clay and what was Clint. The, Clint um, were one was for New Orleans, one was for the San Francisco 49ers. Why do I think that the younger Kubiak for the 49ers is helping the drop back passing game? Mm, I Kubiak. watched Josh Dobbs throw 21 times in the second quarter. And, and this is a team that their their ethos is running the ball, and I still believe they're going to get back to that ethos, and they're going to run, 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 and all that. But there were a lot of um, scripted back shoulder throws and drop back plays. They went four and five wide in the red zone multiple times yeah. the last couple of weeks. I actually think Kubiak, if he is part of this influence, maybe it's also just Shanahan, and I'm under, uh, you know, underselling how much of his philosophy is starting to evolve. I think Kubiak's influence on the drop back passing game is going to have a really, really, really good effect on this team moving forward. Well, he's the offensive passing game specialist, offensive passing game specialist, so he specializes in the offensive pass attack um, and the pass attack for the 49ers. Now they'll they'll get the three or four or five wides. Hell. They were in five wide on third and five in the Super Bowl. Remember that? And pass got batted down. So we've seen three to four or five wide not receiver happy? sets. I'm sad. No, 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 don't talk about that. No, I mean, it's something we've seen with this team before. Brock runs a lot of four and five wide sets. Now, the problem I have with the four or five wide sets is, you know, Debo and Ayuk are solid, but the rest, other than that, and Chris McCaffrey in the slot, you don't have the, you don't have, I need another guy with speed. Like, I always got to have that burner in there. So Kittle's fine. McCaffrey's cool, Debo, that's why I like Mike, but I like I like having a speed a, one guy that's just got blazing speed. Where it's like if I get him in a one on one situation, I take my chances with getting him the football. The really good offenses over the years always had that burner dude. Yeah, you know, like Azakim. Like I'm thinking yeah. about those those early two thousands uh, Rams, right? And they had Ricky Prohl, and they they just had random dudes. Right. Harry Douglas, Gage in Atlanta yep. for for so many years. Like Taylor Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel, great great example. You know, like I'm I'm just I look at some of these these great teams. You're not going to use that guy to throw 120 times at, but no. if you can use him on the jet sweep like they did yesterday and utilize him to just open things up and clear stuff out, I think Cowens can be a very productive right. player for this team. And this is where I go back to the Pearsall thing. It's like, dude, Pearsall, like right now, like I mean, for fans, this isn't for the team, yeah. but for the fans, it's like. Cowings is soaring Whoa. up our board, and my my thoughts of, of Ricky Pearsall couldn't be lower. I just haven't seen him. Dude, I like this overreaction from the 925 extended mobile text line. Overreaction. This is Charvarius Ward's last season with the 49ers. Yamnar Lenore enters elite conversation. Bernardo Green, quality number two corner. You know, I... Uh, I've heard from a variety of people that they're really looking at Diamond Lenore as a star. The yeah. Niners are. Yes. And I know that part of the Brandon Ayuk, Trent Williams kind of domino effect of financials does affect Diamond Lenore because they want to carve out money for him. They do. They value him that way. I don't think that's an overreaction. I think that's a great assessment as you look down the pipeline. Right. Michael Silver wrote an article about this a couple of weeks ago in the Chronicle. Like, we're looking at San Francisco's next star, and it is Diameter Lenore. And I just go back to the first video, which they got fined for when he's in the rookie OTAs and he's playing press man and he's just jamming dudes up. Lenore can play, man. He is solid. And he, he mentioned it actually. He was talking to Richard Sherman and. Let's talk to Richard Sherman. I don't know if it was on that podcast or Richard Sherman podcast, but I forgot where I saw from just over the weekend. And he was talking about last year. He thought he was fighting for his job two years ago. He thought he was fighting for his job. And they go up to Minnesota for joint practices. And he's going up against Justin Jefferson in one-on-ones. And Shanahan is standing behind him, watching like a hawk. And he breaks up a pass, and he looks at Shanahan, and Shanahan's smiling. He was like, because he thought he was in a doghouse. Interesting. He said he was in a doghouse. He was like, dude, I'm trying to work myself out the doghouse. I don't think I'm going to work make this team. What the hell's going on? And he talked about. Did he say doghouse? He, yeah, he said doghouse. Boy, the shit head. The shit head We start calling him Snoopy. Dude, the shit I mean, my God. House. That's why I got a lot of respect for Ayuk. He made it out the doghouse. Let's not act like we didn't see Dante Pettis in the doghouse and just get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Who like, has more people in the doghouse? Don Nelson? Shanahan. That's a great question. They're very they're, similar. They're very similar in that. And if you make it out their doghouse, they'll love you for life. Now, I don't know what's going on with Ayuk and Shanahan. Maybe there's a disconnect there. but And we'll get to some sound about Ayuk in just a second. But Diablo Lenore talked about this in, the, in Detroit practices. And he told Ambry Thomas, I got Justin Jefferson. I need these reps, which is crazy, which oh, shows Thomas. you everything about Ambry Thomas. It's like, All dude, right. you needed those reps. But 
The Amalur Lador followed Justin Jefferson everywhere, and he said that's when he felt like he won Shanahan over in those joint practices in Minnesota and got up out the doghouse. Now this guy, he plays on the side. If I'm not mistaken, 2022, when they beat Detroit in week two against Philadelphia. Now, I could be wrong here, but Philadelphia, from their own goal line, threw a bomb. Mm. And remember, they got inside the Niners' mm -hmm. five-yard line. And I believe it was Lenore who got cooked on that play. But he chased down the receiver at the time. Okay. And he chased him down to save a touchdown. I said, you know what? I like the effort. You got burnt. Next play mentality. But you saved the touchdown. The Niners ended up having the goal line stand. It kept the Eagles out the end zone. So Lenore's come a long way, man. Come a long way. If I'm not mistaken, he was the same corner in that play. But um, well, I feel good about corners overall. I do too. And I, I, It just feels like their deepest. It feels that the cornerback position has been a soft spot for the team yeah. for 25 or 30 years. Doesn't it? They've had one good him. corner. We've always talked about it. Maybe they've had a second that's solid. Like Shante Spencer and, and all, uh, Shante uh, Ahmed Plummer. Shante Spencer out of where? Pittsburgh. Yeah. Second Kate round Panther. pick, number yep. 36. Yep. No Come doubt. on, man. He was uh, solid. He was solid, but he would always have like the broken hand. And, yeah. Um, I bet Plummer was good, and he just he hurt his neck. out of nowhere. Well, yeah. he hurt his neck. Yeah. Like, they, but they were very good. Like That was also like early 2000s. Yeah. You know? So it's been, it's been quite some Carlos time. Carlos Rogers had a year. Okay, uh, and Chris Terrell Col Brown had a year. Terrell Brown had a year. Chris Culliver had a really good rookie yeah, year. Yeah, and who was the other? Tr Tremaine Brock had Tremaine a year. Tremaine Brock, yeah, he had a year. You know, like you Robinson. can find a guy yeah. having a year. It's it's not about having a year. Can you be like good across yeah. the board? Right, that's been one of their one of their weaknesses. Now it feels like they got guys like Renardo Green. Clearly, they worked him on the inside and the outside. He was guarding Olave on the inside and on the outside yesterday. Now, Olave only played a couple of snaps, right. like, but Olave's a a solid receiver. Yep. No, he's solid. He is solid. He made some plays. He slipped on one route. He gets to wherever he wants to get to. I thought Sammy Womack third actually appeared yesterday. I like that. No, it wasn't bad. I, I'm not mad. Like is your last corner of the roster? Uh, yeah. They're alluded to. Uh, by the way, we got about five minutes. Five minutes, folks. Five minutes. We're giving you a chance to come in and have breakfast with the roast Friday, September 6th to kick off football season with this. Listen all week. Listen, all week between 7.30 and 8 o'clock, we have 10 spots we're giving away. Plus, you can bring somebody along for the ride. So 20 people in total. We're going to do this every single day this 